This is an article that came out in Vox, and it's saying that, and I don't know how it can possibly get worse, but the opioid plague could get even worse than what it is. And you know what? In a sense, they are right. You know, with the trade war happening, China is not going to stop all that fentanyl from coming in here, you know, because they're very upset over the trade war. They're not going to help America when it comes down to the synthetic fentanyl that is in free fall coming into the country. Yeah. Well, how America's opioid plague could get even worse. The latest news on America's opioid plague seems positive based on preliminary data. Drug overdose deaths may have fallen in 2018 for the first time since the crisis began in the 1990s. But a new exhaustive report from RAN led by researchers Bryce Pardo points to one way the opioid plague could still take a turn for the worse, possibly leading to thousands more deaths each year if the market for fentanyl were to become more widespread. The report documents the rise of the synthetic opioid fentanyl and its analogs, which have increasingly been mixed with or outright replaced heroin and opioid painkillers in the illicit drug market. This trend towards fentanyl is known as the third wave of the opioid plague. Following the first wave of prescription opioids and the second wave of heroin, the trend has led to a steep increase in overdose deaths because fentanyl and its analogs are far more potent than other illicit opioids and they're a less known quantity of heroin, making it hard for people to use opioids to properly calculate a safe dose. Rand's report finds the introduction of fentanyl doesn't increase the number of people who use opioids. The past decade's increase continues to be linked to preliminary, um, I'm sorry, uh, linked primarily to the proliferation of painkillers. But instead increases the number of overdose deaths. You know what? I was reading an article yesterday and it says there are still a lot of doctors out here prescribing opioids. It's still a lot. And, you know, that being said, there's still a lot of people in the country using opioids. You know, they're trying to crack down on these doctors, but they said it's really not making that big of a difference at all. Um, but while fentanyl <clears throat> and its ilk have already led to an increase in overdose deaths that have mostly happened in the eastern parts of the U.S. and especially the Northeast and Midwest, and Midwest uh, largely due to differences in drug trafficking networks, and the kind of heroin that fentanyl was initially laced in. And that means in a terrifying possibility that fentanyl still has a lot of room to grow. Wow. Wow. So I can tell you right now, if fentanyl grows, there's going to be a lot of people checking out of here. Mm. Have some IT. Okay. Wow. One of the most important and depressing insights in the analysis is that however bad the synthetic opioid problem is now, it is likely to get worse before it gets better. The report explains. Wow. In 2017, 10 states accounted for one-third of all mentions of synthetic 
opioid overdoses, despite making up a little more than one-tenth of the nation's population. Conversely, almost three in 10 states report synthetic opioid overdose death rates that are one quarter of the nation's average of nine per 100,000. The math is simple and distressing. If the rest of the country had a synthetic opioid involved death rate of half of New England in 2017, that would come out to 38,000 synthetic opioid involved fatal overdoses. If this estimate held, Pardo told me it would translate to almost 10,000 more synthetic opioid overdose deaths compared to 2017, or about a third more than the over 28,000 synthetic opioid overdose deaths, excluding methadone, that actually happened that year. Why fentanyl might go west? Hmm. Fentanyl could remain a mostly New England and Midwest phenomena for the same reasons it hasn't spread west yet. For one, the kind of heroin that's most common east of the Mississippi River is simply much easier to mix with fentanyl than the kind of heroin out west. That dynamic, along with the drug trafficking networks that have maintained it, could spare the West from a much bigger fentanyl crisis. Hmm. Still, it's possible fentanyl could spread. Fentanyl became the illicit opioid of choice in the eastern part of the U.S. based on the RAND report, not because people who use opioids wanted it. Instead, the sellers wanted it because fentanyl is much more potent and cheaper and therefore more lucrative than heroin. Those economic realities apply just as much to heroin markets out west as heroin markets in the east. So it could be a matter of time before illicit drug trafficking networks make the change. Once that happens, Rand found fentanyl can spread quickly. And there aren't any examples of a market going back to heroin once fentanyl takes over. Wow. Uh, Estonia and Europe has now maintained a fentanyl market for 20 years. Wow. The U.S. preliminary 2018 data, while generally positive, doesn't rule out the possible spread of fentanyl. While the data suggests overdose deaths went down overall, that was mostly due to falling painkiller overdose deaths that went around from 15,000 in 2017 to 13 to below 13,000 in 2018. But according to the same data, overdose deaths linked to synthetic opioids like fentanyl went up uh, from more than 29,000 in 2017 to nearly 32,000 in 2018. The RAND report provides one way that increase in fentanyl deaths could continue if the drug spreads to other parts of the country. So that's what they're in fear of. They're in fear of, and, and it probably will. I mean, how do you stop it from spreading all over the country? You can't. You really can't. You know, if drug traffickers decide they want to move it out west and want to make money on the west coast, they can do that anytime they feel like it. Efforts to better detect fentanyl at the border could also save lives, especially at mail and shipping routes, particularly from China and Latin America, through which most fentanyl is believed to come. Harm reduction efforts like 
more access to the opioid overdose antidote, norloxone, and more needle exchange could help as well. Uh, well, they've been doing that for, what, 20 years? You know, that has not slowed anything down, but I guess they're hoping for anything that will work at this point because it's been well over 20 years of dealing with these opioids and the overdose deaths. But y'all, please tell me what you think about this. How they believe that this can turn even worse in the U.S. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.